Well, let's find the value of the derivative of f at x equals two, and here's our function, and we're gonna just graph it. Let's graph it in purple if it worked. <laughs> After the last video, I tried getting this pen to work, and it worked briefly, see, told you. It worked for a minute, and this is the graph of x equals absolute value of x minus two. There we go. And, okay, let's, let's start talking about what this truly means. What are we really doing? And we've said that in the, the last video, but let's do it again and let's put it in a little bit of a different phrasing. We are finding the value of the derivative. We're finding the slope of the line that's tangent to a curve. We're finding the slope at a point. That's what we're really doing. So as we followed along here, we found the slope here was five. As we followed along here, we found out the slope doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because the slope coming in from this side and the slope coming in from this side, they didn't match. So I want to know the slope at 2, not with the purple pen, I want to know the slope at 2, and the slope at 2 is, well, I come in from this side and I have a slope of negative 1, I come in from this side, I have a slope of positive 1, and, and the slope is not going to match up. I want to go ahead and tell you that this, this does not exist. The slope is undefined, and we're going to do it algebraically as well, because any absolute value function can be written as a piecewise function, so let's do it. This piece of the piecewise function is for all the values that are less than two, and this piece is for all the values that are greater than two, and somebody needs to be equal and they match up, they meet at that point, the function is continuous, so it doesn't matter which one, I'll just make it that one. Well, this is the line x minus two. How do you know it's x minus two? If you extended this, it would go down to negative two. However, if we just drop the bars, we'd be good. This one is going to be negative x plus 2, because we can see that, but it's also the opposite of everything we see in those absolute value bars. So this is the piecewise function we're dealing with, and as we look at this and we talk about the value of the derivative, wait a minute, what's a derivative? It's slope. Then let's just find slope. On the previous problem, the slope here was negative one-half on this piece, and the slope was negative two for this parabola coming in at that point, okay? So the slope of a parabola is not as easy to find as the slope of a line. This was negative one-half. What's the slope of this line? Negative one. What's the slope of this line? Positive one. They don't match up. So if we wanted to represent it differently, we could say that the slope as x approaches two from the left of f of x minus f of two over x minus 2, and I'm going to change it a little bit here. I would say f of 2, but again, technically it wouldn't equal there if we're going to follow that hard and fast rule, but that would just be 0, is going to be equal to, well, negative 1, because it's the slope at that point, and then the slope at that, sorry, the slope at that point coming in from that side, so the slope of this piece coming in here. So the slope of this piece coming in from the other side, f of x minus also 0, x minus 2, is going to be equal to positive 1. And therefore, we'll write it in red one more time. The value of the derivative <clears throat> at 2 is undefined. Okay. What's the slope of the line tangent to this graph at x equals negative 1? Okay, well, we do have a piecewise function, but this one seems to flow a little more smoothly. So I wonder if the slope coming in from this side and the slope coming in from this side match up. If I'm not asking, is the function continuous? Yeah, it is. But what I'm really asking is, do they have the same slope coming in? And we're going to have to figure that out, and we'll use green. And since it's piecewise, we're going to have to go from either side. So x approaches negative 1 from the left. So we'll have negative 2x minus 1 minus, and then we're going to plug a negative 1 in here. So we'll have negative 2 times negative 1 minus 1, all divided by x minus negative 1. And I would love to waste your time working through all that, but this is asking for the slope on the left. That slope is negative 2 because we're looking at the equation of the line right there. Oops, need to have a little minus there. Sorry, I left it out earlier. X approaches negative one from the left. Now let's approach negative one from the right, and we're gonna have X squared minus, we're gonna plug a negative one in here. That gives us a one divided by X minus negative one. Limit as 
x approaches negative 1 from the right of x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1. That's going to give us, those cancel, the limit. As x approaches negative 1 from the right of x minus 1, we can plug a negative 1 straight in. And when we do, we have negative 2. Therefore, because, there we go, here we go, back to the top. The limit from the left matches the limit from the right. The derivative exists, and the derivative actually would be these two limits. It's whatever we found here. The slope from the left matches the slope from the right. Therefore, the final answer is f prime of negative 1. The slope at negative 1 is negative 2. All right, something that's worth noting that's going to happen as we move forward. We need to make sure that not only do the slopes match up, but even more importantly, I said it briefly, we actually meet up, meaning we have continuity. It's going to come in handy in a minute.